Good morning. morning. It's the fifth Sunday of Easter. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. We should never get tired of saying that because he has risen, so also the groundwork has been laid for us to arise when our time to come alive again after we've died uh, has been reached. And so uh, that's our message this morning. Uh, I'm I'm preaching from the book of Revelation, chapter 21, the promise of Jesus. Behold, I am making all things new. So reflect on that. Uh, We're doing things a little differently now upstairs. Uh, We had a a very nice uh, prelude music between Chrissy and Judy, and they decided during Sunday school that it was so noisy down here when they were playing, they couldn't hear what they were doing. So we're gonna begin the service like this with a few words, then I'll be seated, and then together they will begin to fill this room with hallelujahs. And at the conclusion of their prelude, uh, we'll sing the hallelujahs ourselves because our first hymn this morning and our closing hymn today is all about praise the Lord, Hallelujahs. So it's because Christ is alive, he is risen indeed. Hallelujah.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord who Amen. made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal but I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my calling as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sing to the Lord a new song, 
for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness by the sight of the nation. to God on high. God, you have made the minds of your faithful people to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you have promised, that among the many changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. 
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. O.W. Fraley comes forward to read the first two scripture lessons from Acts chapter 11 and then from Revelation 21. Good morning. All right. The first reading is found in the book of Acts, chapter 11, verses 1 through 18. Now the apostles and the brothers who were throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcision party criticized him, saying, You went to uncirc uh, uncircumcised men and ate with them. But Peter began and explained it to them in order. I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision, something like a great sheet descending, being let down from heaven by its four corners, and it came down to me. Looking at it closely, I observed animals and beasts of prey and reptiles and birds of the air. And I heard a voice saying to me, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But I said, by no means, Lord, for nothing common or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But the, the voice answered a second time from heaven, what God has made clean do not call common. This happened three times, and all was drawn up again into heaven. And behold, at that very moment, three men arrived at the house in which we were, sent to me from Caesarea. And the Spirit told me to go with them, making no distinction. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. And he told us how he had seen the angel stand in his house and say, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will declare to you a message by which you will be saved, you and all your household. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them, just as on us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave the same gift to them as he gave to us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could stand in God's way? When they heard these things, they fell silent, and they glorified God, saying, Then to the Gentiles also God has granted repentance that leads to life. This is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> The epistle is found in the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verses 1 through 7. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And he who is seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also, he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. John, the 16th chapter. Glory be to thee. Jesus said, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. 
for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. A little while and you will see me no longer, and again a little while and you will see me. So some of his disciples said to one another, what is this that he says to us a little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me, and because I'm going to the Father. So they were talking, what does he mean by a little while? We do not know what he is talking about. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him. So he said to them, is this what you are asking yourselves? What I meant by saying, a little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me? You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come, but when she has delivered her baby, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. So also you have sorrow now, but I will see you again and your hearts will rejoice and no one will take your joy from you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Let us confess. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being the one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us and for us. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead. Seated as we sing the hymn, at the Lamb's high feast we sing.
of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We heard this morning already from the book of Revelation, chapter 21. I'm going to read one verse uh, as a reminder of what you heard before, but we'll, we'll really make reference to it all in our message. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. So when Jesus said, Behold, I am making all things new, what was so old and broken down that Jesus promised to fix by making all things new? That's what I invite you to consider with me now. The earlier portion of Revelation chapter 21 offers us some hints. The earth and the sea need to be replaced. They had passed away. God's temple with humanity needed to be replaced also. Additionally, there was a superabundance of tears waiting to be shed, and the ever-present reality of death still had to be dealt with. All of these situations could be traced to the devastating presence of sin in the world and the corresponding loss of the image of God in mankind, the crown of God's creation. And every human being suffered these pangs of original sin ever since the moment when in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve disobeyed God, preferring instead to believe Satan's lie about God. They would rather put their trust in Satan, an evil angel that roamed the earth to destroy the creation God had made, than to believe in the God who had made all things. Man himself had no respite from bearing these wages of sin. Redemption was not within his grasp, for man was a prisoner of sin. Only God could release him and forgive him, and therein lay the problem. Even though God entered this world to redeem it, and actually did defeat and destroy Satan, man refused to believe it and therefore remained a prisoner in sin due to his lack of faith. I have just read you the first 14 lines of my sermon. Dear listener, in these previous 14 lines, I have tried to summarize virtually the entire content of the 66 books of the Bible because I want us to be able to face the truth that only the work of God himself is unable to undo the wages of sin by paying for it himself. That is the effect of Jesus' crucifixion and his resurrection. That is, the faith of, that is the effect of faith that believes that he did this for us. Yes, it's true. This act of divine justification, which is what the scriptures are all about, must be believed. We, meaning we must trust in this as having been done for us and on our behalf by our God and Savior Jesus. For as the scripture says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Oh, how hard it is to believe that the devil is like a roaring lion who prowls about here and there over the earth seeking to devour us 
so resist him firm in your faith, wrote St. Peter in one of his epistles. Do we not believe that Jesus destroyed the works of the devil by paying to redeem us, offering his holy, precious blood and his innocent suffering and death? Or do we not believe that? Is this true also that we may demand more from God than merely to live by faith? Do we seek more evidence from him than his death and resurrection alone? Do we also demand relief from all suffering? Do we demand the resolution of all other needs that still seem to hold sway over our lives? Sometimes it seems that they may stand in the way of our faith. It's a little like today's reading from Acts that contains some new and unsettling details for Peter and for other Jewish people to deal with. So let's look at today's first Bible reading from Acts chapter 11 that indeed contains something new and unsettling. It was on the subject of how we are to obey dietary restrictions, the kind that Judaism requires. So here's what happened. Peter had a vision in which he was asked to prepare and eat animals that were considered unclean by the Jews. Such animals included animals and beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. And in the vision, Peter heard a voice commanding him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. And Peter resisted that voice. By no means, Lord, he answered, for nothing common nor unclean has ever entered into my mouth. But the voice from heaven insisted, what God has made clean, do not call common. This happened three times. And the Holy Spirit fell on the Gentiles who were there. Then it became clear that this work of changing dietary rules was the work of God himself, was the work indeed of the Holy Spirit. Peter quickly concluded that God was not only changing the laws of what they were to eat, but also that he was allowing the Gentiles to repent and therefore to claim life everlasting. For challenging changes were being made now that Christ had risen from the dead and had ascended into heaven. We understand that. Gentiles were receiving the word of God. They were beginning to believe. The gift of the Holy Spirit was being poured out on them. Uncircumcised Gentiles were being baptized. Peter himself was taught to disregard these old dietary restrictions from the Old Testament. Even as Peter was criticized by a group of Jews known as the Circumcision Party that was demanding Peter to explain what was happening. And Peter then explained that God was behind these changes and was already revealing how he was making all things new. Next, Peter concluded, if then God gave the same gift to them, namely to the Gentiles, as he gave to us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could stand in God's way? When the people heard Peter say that, they glorified God. And then they said, then to the Gentiles, 
God also has granted repentance that will lead to life eternal. There were changes being made at, along the way of Jesus saying, Behold, I am making all things new. So these changes came slowly but surely. In the reading from today's gospel, Jesus states, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot hear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. For he will glorify me. He will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Now this is what Jesus was talking about in our text from Revelation 21 verse 5 when he stated, Behold, I will make all things new. Reflecting on that, it seems to me a little bit sad for us that it took quite some time for Jesus to reveal these new things that he was about to do. For the vision that the Apostle John saw in the book of Revelation did not occur until well after all of the other apostles had died. Sources beyond scripture reveal to us that these other apostles died as martyrs. They were put to death because of their faith and their belief. Many details of their lives undoubtedly happened as a result of bad circumstances of lives that were broken and in need of being fixed. Even as we hinted of in the opening paragraph of this sermon. If that were the case, we would not be happy, you nor I, to hear about those details. For if we heard about everything that had happened to these other apostles, we would not have willingly accepted the way the world was mistreating those first apostles before they became martyrs. We have to believe, however, that God would prevail in all things, even as the book of Revelation declares with certainty, and as our text for today categorically has Jesus state, behold, I am making all things new. That message is the long sought after message we want to hear from our, our Lord Jesus Christ. For Satan has once again attempted to thwart the purpose of God. God wants only to restore his creation into his own image. God wants only to bring salvation to those who believed in him. God wants only for Jesus Christ to have the last word that will impart faith into our hearts. And it was in support of that that Jesus, who is the king now in Revelation chapter 21, says, behold, I will make all things new for you. And these words John has received in a divine vision on the island of Patmos. Patmos was a prison island off of the coast of Asia Minor. It was a place for criminals to live out the last days of their life. And we are not sure why John was there, but he had been arrested at some point, and there he was in this prison. 
but God had not done himself yet with John. And so even though John was in that prison, he could hear the voice of God as in a vision. And so God was careful to entrust to John the details of God's grace, his mercy, and his love so that the faith of John might be blessed and he might receive the benefits. The benefits of believing that Jesus was telling the truth when he said, I am making all things new. So what will be made new? John has been given a vision of the city of God coming down from heaven with a new temple. He will dwell among men. And so now Jesus tells John, write this vision down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And now John begins to see what the voice is telling him. Jerusalem, a new city coming down out of heaven from God, beautifully adorned and prepared as a bride would be for her husband. And then John hears a loud voice from the throne promising, behold, the dwelling place of God is with men. Now we already know that the Lamb of God is on that throne and that he has come down in this new Jerusalem to dwell with his people here on earth. And when they hear his voice, they will respond in faith and they will be his people. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death will be no more. No more mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore. For the former things have passed away. Behold, I will make all things new. Isn't that a wonderful promise? I will make all things new. I will come down from heaven. I will make my home among my people. They will respond in belief and in trust of me. I will wipe away every tear from their eyes. I will destroy death and death will no longer exist. Therefore, there will be no more mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore. For the former things have passed away. I will make all things new. And then the voice says, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life. I will do this freely. Nobody will have to pay me for this. And the one who conquers will have this heritage, namely the one who believes these things. And I will be his God, and he will be my son. If that's all you could hear from the vision of St. John, you would have heard its total and complete utter sub substance. For everyone lives his life here knowing that the day is coming, maybe sooner or later, then we will no longer breathe here in, on, this dirt, on this earth. Our, our breaths will have filtered away and we will die. And then there will be those who left behind, who will cry, who will shed their tears. They will suffer mourning. They will suffer the loss that only people who have experienced the death of a loved one are able to experience. 
So what is God talking about when he says, the one who conquers will have this heritage and I will be his God and he will be my son. He's talking about people who believe in Jesus, who believe that his words have the power. He's talking about John himself, the one who was imprisoned there on that island called Patmos. He's talking about how he, John, will be able to withstand and be a victor over sin and therefore over death and over the power of the devil. What a promise that is. And this is what our Lord has in mind for you and for me. That we will believe this, that we will add the faith that the Holy Spirit of God can grant to us, and only that Holy Spirit is able to grant that faith to us. We will have that faith, and we will take that faith directly to the promise that Jesus has made and we will be with him in his presence eternally forevermore. To the thirsty, I will give from the spring of water of life. I will do so freely. You will not be able to buy it. You cannot deserve it. It will be offered you because you believe. Your faith is that which will conquer. And the one who conquers by faith will have this heritage. I will be his God. He will be my son. Somewhere it says that the New Jerusalem will not have a temple in it. How could that be? Because Jerusalem and the temple were hand in hand all the time. But when the New Jerusalem has Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, seated on the throne, it does not need a temple anymore. For Jesus came into our world to do what the Lamb of God did, to suffer himself for our sin, to receive the gift of life in place of death, so that we no longer have to live in that kind of fear over the power of Satan and death. And this is our heritage. And our God will offer this to us and we will be known as his sons, his daughters, always and forever. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds on this faith for life now and life eternal. Amen. Now let us stand and sing the remaining stanzas of the hymn we left behind as we began the sermon, starting with verse <coughs>
people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. For calm hearts and strong faith in the midst of our sorrows, that we who celebrate the resurrection of our Lord would trust in his promise of our own resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. For the church, the precious bride of Christ, that she would receive his spirit, listening always to his deathless voice, declaring his message of salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. For our homes, that God who guides his redeemed people to his holy abode would be the companion of all who live in these homes, in families and alone, and that he would fill all our households with his wisdom and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of our earthly leaders, that you would guide them to serve you according to your will for the common good of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. And for all of those who live now in tribulation, with disease, with all kinds of illness and brokenness of heart and spirit, that God will at the last banish all sorrow from them, making all things new, taking away sin and death even, to increase their faith and see them through all their trials. Let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ that cleanses us from sin. Enable us to be united to believe in him and confess one faith and bring us to that day when we shall be one people together at your table. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord for patience as long as we need to wait for the second coming of Christ and for joy even now as we receive his presence in word and sacrament, let us pray to the Lord. Lord All these things and whatever else you know we need grant to us, Heavenly Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We remember the names of the people on our bulletin list. And, and we add to that list of names today the name of Suzanne Gehring, whose father, Bill Erdman, died suddenly two days ago at his home in Florida. We ask your blessing upon Suzanne and her entire family as she and they suffer mourning because of death. Help us all, therefore, to trust in you who promises, behold, I make all things new. So let's continue the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary for us at all times and places to give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, through our everlasting God and Savior. And most especially do we praise you for his glorious resurrection, for he was the very Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us, who bore the sins of all the world. In his dying, he destroyed death. By his rising, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with all those who have witnessed the living Lord Jesus Christ, 
with Mary Magdalene and Peter and John, and with all other witnesses of his resurrection, together with angels and archangels and the entire company of heaven, let us laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Oh. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and drink ye all of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you us always.
Savior be upon you, and may the precious body and the shed blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you in true faith for life now and life forevermore. Go in his name. for refreshing us through this salutary gift, and we implore you in your mercy to strengthen us in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bless we the Lord. Be the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. One week from now, uh, after the conclusion of the late service on May the 22nd, uh, there will be a voters meeting uh, sponsored by our call committee, the purpose of which is to describe some of the details that are in the back side of your bulletin there that you can look and re reflect on. Uh, any questions? Go in peace and serve the Lord.